Copley Trust meeting to order. It's six o'clock. First on the agenda, approve the minutes of October 18th, 2021. So moved. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Who was that second, Gloria? I think she beat you, Brian. Yep, she did. Second by Gloria. <laughs> Is there any further discussion on these? Um, this is totally not important, but on the very last page of uh, second to last page, select board concerns. So I think it's page eleven of our packet. This is not. We're just doing copy, copy right now. Copy oh, trust. oh, the copy trust. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, the copy yeah. trust meet. meet yeah. Minutes. Okay. Just a copy, copy trust minute. So is there any further discussion on these? All in favor say aye. Aye. Don? I'm gonna abstain, I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. Any opposed? The minutes are passed. Next, discuss the application from Copley Country Club. Do you wanna talk about that, Gloria? Or do you wanna? Karen Are you here tonight? I'm Karen oh, great. Well, Welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, we submitted a, a request for funds from the Copley um, Trust for um, primarily replacing the drinking on the porch. And when we started looking at the situation, we realized that it was going to be very involved because the pillars that hold up the roof are supported by the porch. So they have to build this whole scaffolding thing and take the pillars off and, and then replace it. Um, the part under cover right now is not in terrible condition, but there are two sections of the porch that um, are exposed to the elements and they're spongy. So, you know, out of abundance of caution, we, we you know, it needs, for safety and so on, we, we need we need to get this um, looked at, uh, you know, taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of back and forth, and there's various building materials there that. Just so everybody can hear me, I'll do this, and everybody just sit around me. Um, we've gone back and forth about building materials. Um, there's some tropical hardwoods there that everybody talks about, this Baloo and Ipe and, and then traps. Like, what's the global footprint the, of trucking stuff from a rainforest to Vermont versus using the plastic, not as aesthetically in keeping with the building, although um, long life, low maintenance, some of these require oiling and things like that. And the one thing we didn't want to do is replace it with something that would be an ongoing yearly maintenance issue uh, that would need to be done before the course is open when you're running around busy anyway. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of, by default, we, we went for the trekking. We decided that the trekking was probably the, the best way. Uh, that said, we, we We've got, uh, we had some local contractors do some bids, come up with quotes, um, but the timing and everything going, looking so far out, you know, the way building materials are right now, <laughs> you're kind of, um, yeah, it's. Have you seen these sticks? Well, it doesn't really matter if we don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> So my question um, to, to the uh, members of the Copley Trust is that um, I understand um, Eric explained to me how um, it's the, the money that's, the funds that are given out are only from the income from the fund, no, no principal. And at this point, there's not enough um, income. So my follow-up question was, so, if we say no, and then other people come in and ask other requests, it's just gonna push us further down the line until the fund has enough money to fund this request. 
So um, if you're inclined to um, approve the concept of us getting funds to do the to redo the decking on the, the <coughs> park, um, I'm asking: Is there a way that we can be kind of first in line for when the funds start building up, or do we just have to sit back and you know other requests come in? I mean, it could be several years <laughs> at that rate. So. Have, you, have we had that situation before, Dick, where... Hey, I'm sorry, but I think he had a specific provision that we're not supposed to commit to something unless we have the money for it. But I... I'm not positive. Right. I'm just wondering if we had the... I'll look it up and I'll let you know. Yeah. Because, you know, so far since I've been on the board, we haven't declined a request because of not having money in the account. But that's why I wondered if, if that's ever happened before. And I don't think so. Okay. I know the market the way it is right now it could be down for a while, but it could be back next week too. We don't know. Um, but do you understand what, what he's saying? Yeah. And I don't know that Dick would know the pro provisions of it much more closely than we do. That's a really good question, though. I, and I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be, but if, if we can't even promise somebody. Here's some scripture. I direct that said income shall not be anticipated or pledged beyond the amount initially in hand. It may be accumulated for any purpose within the scope of the gift. This excessive accumulation may be applied to the same object. It's a little bit. That is a little confusing. Can you spell it out? Anyways, minutes? but that's what I was thinking of. Right. I'll give it a more thought, okay? Yeah. Do you have any idea how long it takes? I know you don't have to be a genie to, to predict, like, how long it normally takes for that amount of money to accrue into the account on a normal basis. Depends on the market. Or the dividends and... Which also depends on the market. There's a letter from uh, the bank that manages the trust. And in the letter, they made a very conservative prediction uh, that in one year, the fund itself would generate in the range of 20 to 25 thousand dollars. But they you know, sort of there. And he held to that as just a conservative estimate. But the growth of the Seems to me like. You know, maybe we can't officially promise or, or have you be, you know, we're going to give you the money when it's in there kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But you're the first person that's asked for money since we've had this situation, and right? I mean, can't we as a group say, okay, well, you're, you're, your name is there, and, you know, we'll see what happens to the market, you know? Mm -hmm. And then any other requests, in my mind, would, would come after this request. We don't have to officially say it, or you know, you know no. what I'm saying. That's what you're worried about, right? Is it possible without pledging the specific money? That's can you say um, when we have the, your request is the next one that will be considered, considered with the funds? Right. That's that's a legal question. Yeah, I don't. Bob, Bob, I have a question. Uh, maybe Dick can answer this, but is there an option for the country club to take out a loan and for the trust to perhaps pay the down payment this year and next year continue to pay down the debt until it's paid down? That would be a question for the trustees. The trustees own the country club for people that don't know that. We just took on a loan for, um, we had to replace a bunch of golf carts, so. Sorry, one second. It sounds like the um, people can't hear, so would you mind going to the mic? Oh, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Karen. Certainly, it's something that we can look at if it's going to be really down the line and we have to, um, for the safety. I mean, knowing, you know, after I heard from Eric that there was no money in the um, income account, um, I've spoken to the general manager, and they're going to go under there and see if there's any way for the time being that we can shore up the deck so that we don't have any accidents. That's, you know, first and foremost. 
Um, uh, as far as taking on more debt at this time, it would, it, it would take us going back and looking at, we just took a loan out for new golf carts. Um, uh, I, I don't know whether or not we would even qualify with a big note out standing now, a new, brand new one. So, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of a pickle. Yeah. Does anybody else have any input or comment? What do you think about that, Dick? How do you, what's your read on that? I don't that? like that debt business at all. Right. I don't want to be committed to pay someone some debt. Mm -hmm. But uh, just it well, takes figuring out. But he says it can't be pledged beyond the amount of paying in hand, but you can't accumulate it until you get the amount. Mm -hmm. so, but I, I don't think we should take any action on that tonight until I right. look right. at it myself and check with the bank. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? We can review it further and sure. maybe have a better answer. Well, if you're saying we can accumulate it, in other words, if, if they need this amount, we're going to keep amount till we get to that point and contact them, accumulate it for them. Is what you're saying? Well, that is that's one possible interpretation. Okay, right. Well, it occurred to me in the last yeah. five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> need to do more research. Uh -huh. Right, and that could be four years based on the yeah. the accrual rate. Yeah. Okay. Depends a lot on right, what market, happens. Yeah. yeah, and um, if cost of building supplies go down, who knows the right. cost right. could be for less. Right. Yeah. Um, a lot of factors right yeah. now. And the other thing is, Eric had asked me if there was a way to do it in segments, but the way the roof is over two parts of the porch and then there's two other parts that are not covered, once you build a scaffolding to support the roof structure, you, you know, gotta do the whole thing. You got to do it all at yeah, one time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Don, you have any other comments? Well, I think um, I think she just answered my other question was whether to if, if there was any way to uh, do it in do it in portions, but it, it makes sense what what she's saying. And the deck is the priority, and then the, the inside floor is the secondary. The inside yeah. was, it, it is more cosmetic. It's, yeah. We were, you know, yeah. trying to upgrade. We're getting many more community um, alumni mm -hmm. dinners and things like that up at the club. And, and now that we, we purchased the tent from the Historical Society, we're having a lot more um, events up there. Mm -hmm. And um, so carpet's shoddy and yeah. old, and we thought, okay, well, we'll see if we can get some you know, that up and then take it back to the original hardwoods and so on. So yeah. that's not as important. Is there another entrance that, you, that can be used in case that has to be, you know, cordoned off and not use the actual deck or the um, both, both entrances are off that deck, aren't they? There's a side entrance that's, that's, that you don't have to go through the deck, right. but I'm just saying if it got to that point, right? Especially in the time of COVID, people really like to eat outside mm -hmm. because you know, for, right? I'm just saying worst case scenario if it yeah. gets <coughs> before the fund recovers. I mean, again, I think that what the the first thing is to find a way to shore up the areas that are not covered. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think that it's the um, there's plywood under there, there's um, astroturf on top of it and plywood, and I think that it's just where the screws have gone down into the joists. It's just rotted around the screws, right. and that's why you get the bounce in the there. The spongy feel. Um, but again, we want to make sure that, it's, that nobody's going to be falling through there. Right. You know, if you get a rowdy party and everybody's kind of doing a mosh dance on the deck, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> All right, sounds like we need more follow-up. Well, I just ask if the funding request remains the same if you were to remove the carpet and the indoor work, does your funding request stay at the, the, the listed amount that I have? It would be minus. Um, um, well, the request, the, the, the decking and, and such was 85. Then the, uh, the floors were um, uh, $3,800 to refinish the floors. 
And that's in case if there was no um, repairs needed to be. They kind of pulled up from each corner to look at the floors. We couldn't rip up the whole carpeting. There might be some areas that have to have some repair. So we put in a little contingency just in case. Um, we're hoping that that's not the case. But um, so the most important right now is the 85 for the, the decking. Mm -hmm. And that includes the wheelchair ramp and such as well. Mm -hmm. OK. Anybody have any comments or questions? I think if, it, if, if Bridget has a chance to look at that, would it be necessary to call the cop and just reading again? Or can we be clarified by any of that kind of thing? Because basically, we know we have to money. Right. We may be able to make an action, though, depending on the interpretation yeah. of that. I think that we should have another meeting. Yeah. So we all can yeah. copy it over. And it would be in the minutes then, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. So I think maybe reiterate just for the people on Zoom, I hope they heard all that. Right. And there's a question up there. How many times can the country club come back to the coffee fund? Well, can. Is there a provision for how many times somebody can ask for funds? I don't think so. No, I think if it's a different project, it can be repeated. <clears throat> they might do something uh, over and over again, you know, as the years go by, like. Banshell's been worked on more than once, yeah. I know, but the copy found. A lot of these buildings have been. Uh, okay. You want to set that meeting for next month? Do you think you have an answer for the Oh, yeah, sure. Sounds good. So we're going to have a, another meeting when we figure out the interpretation of um, exactly what the company fund says about money that can be used or or not used or promised. <clears throat> Anything else with that? It was our bank was community, right? Community mm -hmm. bank and would it help to have pardon? community bank and a yeah. would it yeah. help to have a representative? It'd be nice to talk to somebody. It'd be nice to talk to somebody at the bank. Yes. Um, I think I missed last meeting. Did they come to us? No, they were going they to. Come anyway. Yeah, we that's a good idea. A yeah, that's a good idea, especially right now. Yeah, that's a good good point, Dick. All right. Anything else for the Copley Fund? Copley Trust Fund? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I have a motion by Gloria <laughs> and a second by Dick. Any yeah, further yeah, discussion? Brian. Brian seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now adjourned from Coffee Trust. Thanks for coming in, Gloria and Dick. No, thank you, Peter. Karen, thank you. yeah. We'll cross our fingers. Thanks. Thank you, easy. All right, we'll call the select board meeting to order at 618. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Eric? Uh, there are, there's an addition to liquor control. Okay. No other uh, Okay. All right. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of March 21st, 2022. Now, Jess. <laughs> I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Don. Thanks, Don. Is there further discussion um, with you? I just don't want to go down in history as saying re looked at um, on page 11. So if we could change that to revisited. It's really dumb. I, I don't even know why I'm saying it. <laughs> this is really dumb. I, don't, I mean, it's so, it's so inconsequential. Page 11. Yeah. Um, it says mass probably could be re-looked at in the event of another surge or guidance. And just, could we just change that to revisited? Yeah, re-looked, yeah. Revisited. Yeah. I Thank like you. that. Okay. 
Um, that sounds a lot smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Vlog. I like the creativity of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else from these minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Any opposed? The minutes are passed unanimously. Next, community concerns. We have community concerns tonight. Tony, go ahead. He's back. <laughs> He's allowed to come back. Welcome. Hi. Hi. So two weeks ago, my name was Anthony. Tonight is Tony. Okay. Only because that's what I go by. Okay. Okay. Have for sixty years anyhow. Yeah, so everyone I'm referred to you as Tony, so I figured right. it's okay to go so, Tony. Let's get on first name basis here so we can get things done. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, first of all, I want to know about this Act 250 permit I keep hearing about. And what's going on, what happened to it, and why isn't there any gravel? It's, do you want to give a quick rundown on the gravel pit, Eric? I know you don't want to, but would you please? Have a seat. No, I'm not no, sitting I'm just up. being silly, because it could be... No, no that's fine. No, we, uh, you can do. You can use a short version if you want, Eric. No problem. <laughs> That's okay. I can tell you where we're at in the process right now. The uh, hearing recess order. Uh, we have a, a response deadline for that. We it was today. We asked for a two-week extension because there's some last-minute questions from ANR in reference to invasive species treatment and, and uh, mediate, uh, mediation. So, uh, two weeks from today, we will file our or maybe prior. Uh, we'll fire our last uh, answers to the hearing recess order, which is toward the end of the process. At that point, the, the uh, activity commission takes all the evidence and all the, the follow-ups we, we present to them, and they'll deliberate. And we hope to have a permit in hand in some form with whatever sets of restrictions they may put on it uh, in a July timeframe. I, I use that uh, month reference and a couple of different groups that I've talked with, and I keep getting the head nod, but that's a, a, a good uh, guess at this point. So the town has no gravel? Is this right. what? what? This, no is, this is the third year, right? We're doing we're, we're the third year. The town has no access to gravel. Not at right. all. No. We can purchase gravel. We you can purchase gravel. Because right. Howard would give you gravel if you buy it. Well, yeah, there's, yeah. there's gravel we purchased. We've, we've been purchasing it at least lowest okay. price. And but not very much. We budgeted one hundred and forty, forty-five thousand dollars in the current budget year for material. We spent half of that on our sand for this winter, and the other half was to be used uh, as needed uh, for, for the road bands. So, would you say this is why Cody Hill is suffering? That's along with other roads. No, I just want an honest answer. Yeah, I, think I don't care about other roads. I travel Cody Hill. Right. And we have to look at the whole thing. We're not looking at just Cody Hill. Okay. We're looking at 90 miles. My taxes ride. come out of Cody Hill, and that's what I'm worried about. And it's and it's for two and a half years now. And I'm not talking about this mud season. Everybody tells me this mud season has been bad. Okay, it's bad. The road is deteriorated. Okay. Ever since I rode with Kevin, it's gone downhill even more. So where does it stop? Well, it's also due that that coincides with our losing a gravel pit. We couldn't, we, our permit expired. How do you lose, okay, how do we lose the, the gravel pit? permit expired on the pit, so we couldn't draw any more gravel out of the pit. Legally, the state shut us down. So we had to, we had to apply for Act 250 permit to go back in there. But, but how does they, that expire? They've given us a runaround for two and a half years. We've, we've jumped through hoop after hoop after hoop. Site visits, um, our engineer has been up there We've, we've done so much to try to get this worked out, but we've had to set money aside to buy gravel, and we've, we've made it go as long as we can. But that, that definitely coincides. It's been, I'm working on year three. You know, we, so you mean our road's gonna suffer until July or August? We're hoping we can get gravel by July or August. There's no, there's no guarantee right now. We're hoping that that's the case. You know, but it's, but it's also every, everywhere else. And how about the ditching that so badly needs? We need ditching bad. We know. Yeah, we know. Okay. We, we need it in a lot of roads. I, yeah. I We're, talked to Tony on the phone a couple of days after our last meeting. So yeah. Our, our work probably this, this summer. Yeah. The work plan itself and large is, is about 
ditching, getting down the berms on the edge of the roads, getting the roads pulled back toward the center, redeveloping the crown. Yeah. There is no crown. Right. You're right, Eric. Right. right. The, the crowns are gone. We have covert work, too. There's covert the roads, work. To be the roads have, over the past number of years, have, uh, as we grade them, they continue to push out. We need to pull the edges back down. There, there is plenty of gravel there to help to, to mend it. Band-aid approach in yeah, sense, yeah. to bring the crown back and clean the ditches out. Mm -hmm. uh, there are areas that need additional material brought in. And our plan, if the permit is in hand in J July, we'll have overburden to remove for the Hall Road area before we can access the good material which is underneath. So my estimate then was that by late August, September, we hope to have processed gravel by right. an amount that we can use to start applying the roads in those trouble spots. But it doesn't mean we're not going to be working the roads. Right. The guys are going to be working to grade the roads. They're going to be cleaning ditches. This is uh, ongoing. But the deburning is a big part of that. Uh, the grass and stuff that grows up on the edges of the road holds the water in the roads, causing more erosion. So ultimately, we want the water to sheet off from the roads into the ditches, not, not channel off the roads into the ditches. But yeah, or channel down the road. That's right. So, so I assume we have a young town crew. I think we got a young town crew, right? But there's some of them that would appreciate that description. Have, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> no, I don't know, because I don't know. But I see them. We've got to make sure folks... Uh, have they ever been educated? Does the state offer any kind of education on how you build a road and and how you maintain a road? And, and I know they're only allowed to do so much because there's no money. Well, we have two graders and they're out throughout the summer. Well, they're not out on Cody Hill. He came up last Wednesday and I talked with him. Okay. On Cody Hill when you talked to him. Yeah. That and he patched it. They, they were adding material to the ruts. You had a lot of washboards and stuff. And that's right back. Holes. Okay. Until they dig it out, that's going to be. Right. But they can't grade the road with frost down. So they're waiting for the frost okay. to come out. As soon as that's done, they're, they're going to be on the edges, pulling into the center. So what, what do you think your best estimate is? Because as, as of tonight, the frost, I don't see any more frost. And I. Well, there's still frost coming out. It depends on the area. The shady areas in particular. Okay. I see a flat road right now. As soon as it rains, it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. any, any, is there any chance of any kind of monthly maintenance that we could have here? Well, there's maintenance that goes on every day. We don't see it. Yeah. I'm only up here a quarter mile, and I don't see it. Well, you have 75 miles of dirt roads. Cody Hill has been getting its share of it okay. because it's had some bad right. spots. So, in that section of the road, I'll pass the whole road. I got I got 47 other people that say the road is not good. So you can do what you want with this. Okay. okay. But everybody to watch it. Yep. Okay. Yep. It isn't just on Cody Hill. We want to and oh, yeah. Action. And it's to me it's disgusting that that we have to live like this because we have a good tax base. And I think and I'll tell you something else that's really bothers me is that we we contacted some older people here seniors that are worried about the town giving them repercussion because they signed that petition i had to actually talk to them and say you have no worry about repercussion because you're signing the petition of course not no of course yeah. not okay absolutely yeah. not but they don't know that right yeah and that's and that's <clears throat> not that's too bad if that, that they really think that yeah all this is here is my neighbors, right, yeah. 55 of them. Yeah. None of them are happy. There's so no it's not just that. me and it's not just Sheila. Yeah. We, went to, we went to 55 doors and that's what we got. It's not good. We don't want them I'm doing it for myself because I got three classic cars. I would like to just drive it a quarter <laughs> mile down the road and I can't do that. Yeah, I hear you. We don't want them okay. thinking that they feel this way. So we had talked a lot to them, saying that there's no way they're going to sign that paper. It's just telling them it's just not telling them. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we know it's not you. I mean, it's everywhere. Well, it's we get calls all the time. <laughs> Well, I'm going to keep coming back until I'm satisfied. When I don't come back, you know, that means I'm satisfied. <laughs> we'll, we'll do the best we can. We'll... Okay. And yeah. thank you for sending the grader up. The grades have been up on Cody Hill as much as it's been any place. I didn't. I right. passed along the point on the cabinet, and the guys working into their schedule. 
Oftentimes, the roads are already on there, but it's for today. You know, we have a couple sure. of Lawrence Brown Road, and it's already on the list. So, right. so, so, so would you say the problem is mainly because we have no gravel? That's, no, no, that's a big one, though. No. There's, there's, there's a part of it that that is true. For two years, we haven't had quality gravel. We had the, the last gravel we had come out, we were we were working around the dangerous plant, and uh, it just it got to the point there was no good gravel left. So we stopped taking material out. Our permit was so open, there was no material left to take. So when we moved from phase two, you back to your earlier question about the permitting process. Because we were out of material, we initiated over two years ago now, the process of applying for a renewal of our permit. Because anytime we change operation, location, we have to renew the permit. Takes it through a whole other series of Act 250 review. So we're working toward a phase three area. Phase one and phase two are now complete. Uh, we have some more uh, work in phase two to calm the banks down, to bring it back to the slope that's agreed upon. And then uh, phase three, we need to cut some trees, stump it, get the overburden off, and then get into the good material, build a haul road up into the phase three area. But uh, we're, the permit process has been lengthy. We filed our permit in January of 2020. COVID hit in March of 2020. Everything slowed down at all levels of government. And uh, we have been left with this very elongated process. It's, it's un, uh, unprecedented how long we've been in this process. There have been several of us who have reached out to people in, in the state government to try to get this moved along. And uh, it worked to a certain point, but then it gets slowed down again. And then we have people coming forward from the town who are uh, com making complaints about what's going on with the gravel pit. And that slows down the process. So the, the, uh, the town administration has done everything in their power to get these permits out in a timely fashion. And unfortunately, COVID hit and all these other extenuating circumstances got in the way. We have a, an engineer that, that uh, has been working the plan for us. And we had to hire an attorney to represent us as well because the process just became so elongated that uh, it, it really made more sense for us to have legal uh, driving us legal and, and an engineer working together to drive this uh, for us. So it was beyond our capability, beyond mine for sure. How about the town was to hire an engineer to see these roads, to see what we can do and what needs to be done? I, we've got an engineer that we work with uh, regularly. Uh, I can certainly speak to him. I can have another different engineer take a look at it. Um, I don't have an issue with that at all. It's just getting more consulting fees to have them take a look at it. We know what the problem is. We got to get out there this summer, and summer hasn't hit yet. But as soon as we can get the graders out in the home of the roads, you're going to see the edges come into the middle and the ground coming back on the roads. And that's our goal for this summer. We got to the point where we get all 75 miles, but we're going to hit the really bad spots. And there's, there's several of them. Yeah, and, I, and and I'm not asking for the for the world here. I just I'm asking for a quarter mile. I'm I, I'm looking after myself, okay. And I hope the whole road gets done. But we met our neighbors. But, yeah, <laughs> we met our neighbors. Good. Good way to meet your neighbors. Well, I people up there. Everybody seemed to know me. I didn't know them. I've been gone for 35 years. So right. Well, your last name's Cody. You live on Cody Hill. That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> but the, I don't know. They knew me by face somehow, but that's okay. But they're, they're again, wherever the petition is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for bringing Thank it to our attention. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do the best we can. And, and I guess that's all I can ask for for now. You know, Thanks. Thanks, yeah. for, Thanks for being very good about it tonight. Right. I appreciate it. No, I, I appreciate you guys. And I just want to, let's move forward. Yeah. And... I understand everybody's in a pinch here, but um, I want to get the word out that there's a lot of unhappy people. Okay? Understood. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is there any other community concerns tonight? I just Sheila. wanted to say that we talked to eight people that had their tires popped by those big rocks that got put up there on the road. I don't know who put them up there, but I don't think they're very good. And we had one lady tell us that her front end of her vehicle had to be fixed because it was so bad from the road up on Cody Hill. And it took her six weeks to get her car back because of parts. You guys don't know what the rocks are. Here's the rocks. 
Yeah, we left them. Better in there, bitch. We picked three of them up. Hmm. They're all two inch and below where you go. They're all looking at the ditch. Yeah, that one we're going to clean up. So we had a, a weather event. On yep. the third day it was 60 degrees and sunny, and the road was a mess. And on Friday we got 10 inches of snow. Okay. We can't plow ruts. So the, what the, the plan was was to go up with a stone and fill the ruts, knowing that overnight the temperature was going to drop substantially, firming the road up. We were in anticipation that the, the stone would mix in with the mud, and probably 90% of the roads, that's exactly what happened. It firmed up the roads, so when they were able to plow them the next day, and get, get it opened up. There were areas like that. There's others on the Mud City Loop up by the Rooney Farm. Our guys went back this spring to clean that up because it didn't get mixed in with the mud enough when they plowed, they plowed the stone in the, on the side of the road. But you'll see that cleaned up. That's again on the part of our product this spring. We know it, we know where they are. Yeah, Great. Fitzgerald Road, road too. Yeah. Another spot. Great. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Sheila. You're welcome. All right, we'll move on to liquor control. You got Dom back there? Yeah. Can, can you hear us, Don? I sure can. I've been here. <laughs> Just hey, the connection. Yeah, we do. I was gonna kind of wait till Don came back. He's on I, my computer. I've been able to hear you all the way through, so. I just can't hear him. Can you hear us, Don? I can hear you fine. I've been able to hear you all the way through. His mouse went there. <laughs> Put your thumb up. I can't even tell if it's on or off. It's off. It's off. Oh, it's just not connecting. Not connected. Okay. Is it on? Technology. Um, <laughs> do you need to just move the mouse? Did you try moving the mouse so it like just fall asleep? Or try? No, it's all on the Can you guys hear me? Is there like an input button on the... Um, there, there we go. <laughs> you back, Don? Yeah, I, I've been able to hear you all the way through, so. Right, we couldn't hear you. Okay. I wanted to make sure you were, you were there before we went into liquor control. For the record, I did nothing. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right. Do I hear a motion to go into liquor, liquor control? So moved. I have a motion by Brian. Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are now in liquor control. Uh, there's one renewal for police. Okay. It's the last of the regular renewals for the calendar year. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any issues, Jason? No, no issues. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Thanks, Don. <laughs> Motion is passed. Next, we have another liquor control addition, I'm guessing. Yeah, Jason doesn't know about it, sorry. Um, it's for, it's a request to cater for um, moves on July 23rd at the Oxbow Park. You already approved them using that park for their annual Festival. This is from 2 to 11 for about 600 people. It's not, Tom in, it's not in here. Right, it's not in there. Okay. Tom, how are you? I am well. How are you, Bob? Good. Can you tell us about it? Absolutely. And first of all, thank you for approving my liquor license to you all. Uh, nice to be here in town doing business. But Oxbow Music Festival, it's our sixth time in the park. And we have a family friendly, wonderful music event for everybody in town that I think is a great addition to what we do here at Morrisville. Um, aside from that, um, like every year, I'll make you all proud. I won't let anybody down. We keep everybody safe. Um, we put a small bar in the middle of the park. We fence the entire park off. It is a paid admission event that's family friendly. We have kids' activities and such and such. 
goes on. Um, I have walked the park several times with the Department of Liquor Control. I tell everybody what we do and how we do it, and um, free myself up for the entire day to make it as safe as it possibly can be. Anything else anybody wants to know, I'll be happy to talk. And there's bartenders serving. That's correct. So I take a couple of people from my restaurant. We're right here in Morrisville all the time. They go down to the park. Um, they serve. Um, the Green Mountain Distillery sponsors us, um, uh, along with Switchback and Stowe Cider for this particular event. So we represent those products. Um, but ultimately, it's my restaurant staff that does the serving, and they're all trained um, very well at what they do. Yep. Who's that? Jason, you have any comment about any prior issues or anything like that? No, I mean, for the most part, we haven't had an issue down there. Tom stopped by the PD last week or week before, we talked about it, and I'm good on my end. Yeah, I know Tom always has reached out to law enforcement, and we we appreciate that, Tom. Absolutely. Any questions? So you approved the use of the park for this fire? This is the liquor. Liquor yeah. portion of it. Right. Yeah. And that's within the policy of the park. As long as there's someone serving who is registered bartender, yeah. certified or whatever it's called. By the DLC. Absolutely. So um, every single one of my employees um, have a certificate from the Department of Liquor Control. Um, and all of those certificates I keep on a clipboard behind the bar at my restaurant right down the street. When we do a catered event, we bring the slips for the individual, individual bartenders with us with the catering approval and it's all placed directly upon the area where we serve. Okay. All right, any other questions for Tom? Don, any questions? Uh, no questions, just a comment that when I've been down there, it seems like everything's gone very well. Yeah, I've only been down a couple of times because I was out of town, but I like going down when I'm here. July 23rd, yeah. I don't hear the town though. I hope so. We'll see. If I am, I'll come. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. No. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second, Judy? Second. All right. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else for liquor control, Sarah? Not okay. Do I hear a motion to come out? So moved. I have a motion to come out by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Don? Aye. Any opposed? We are now out of liquor control. All right. So, first is to discuss the Oxbow Music Festival. That, that was number two. Number two. This is this is a separate discussion from what you just approved. Right. Uh, this is a second event scheduled for tentative week of September seventh at the office. For when? September seventh. Oh right, okay. <clears throat> okay. And what's that about? It's another event. The, I think the uh, the context of the event is the same as the one in July. It's music. It's uh, Stuff like that. Well, we do. We have a we have another music event that we would like to do on September seventeenth. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, yep. The event um, actually done this particular event a couple of times in the Oxbow Park already in previous years, and uh, I called it a day in the park where it wasn't a paid event. What we did is we went out and we got sponsors for it so that we could put a free music show on in the park for everybody to enjoy. Um, and then we invited local businesses from around town to set up in the park and just kind of be known. So um, in the past, I did this for two years uh, by myself. I did work with uh, Trisha Fuller on the first one. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so my Oxbow business partner, Nick, and I would like to bring this to a little bit of a larger level where we have a great music show where we have three bands. Uh, the event would be called Keep On Growing. Um, and it is modeled off the same idea of the Oxbow Music Festival, where we have some food trucks down there, we have some local sponsorship, and we put on a music and art show for the community. Mm -hmm. This would be a, a paid ticket event this year. With not, fence up as well. Too. Yes, not a free event. Mm -hmm. um, I do like doing things that way uh, because when we do these events, we hope every year that they get a little bit bigger. And as an event grows, we like to take those safety concerns with us as well. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's a great idea to work with Jason yeah. on any of these events that we do in the park. Um, um, so that's what we like to do on September 17th. Um, you know, it's been a really, it's been a rough couple of years. Um, we're trying to get some music events out there that we were unable to do for two years um, and get some people out enjoying the outside, enjoying that park. Mm -hmm. You have any concerns, Jason, on this one? I don't. I mean, Tom's run a pretty tight shit down the other you know, ones for the past, as we said, six years. So, you know, on face value, I don't have any concerns. Physical. What about the uh, time of music? Yeah. How long music going to play for? And... For this event? Yeah. Um, well, I did. I put down. For the catering, actually, we haven't gotten that far yet. I think that'll be on the next meeting. Mm. Um, Three to ten. Yeah. But I believe that this show ends before ten o'clock, okay. so it has absolutely no effect on the noise ordinance whatsoever. Okay. Uh, on our other show that was approved, I, I do believe we have the extra hour in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's why I looked at the ten or eleven. But when you get to September, it gets dark a lot earlier, and we really don't want to be in that park at, at ten o'clock. Mm. You want to. We want to wrap it up and and uh, clean it up and get out of the park. Mm -hmm. you, you do have eleven on it. Yeah, What's that's, on, that's on the catering. Yeah, right. And I just put I put two to eleven on both, and in all retrospect, I usually close the bar at the Oxbow Music Festival at ten o'clock as well. I just put the extra hour in there in case, and I put the extra hour in there in case this event was going to go to 11, but we have absolutely no plans for that event. Right. That's why I asked, because I yeah. saw two different times there. So. so the bar at this event will probably be shut down between 9 and 9.30. I just, whenever I do the request, <coughs> I always expand them out of that. Um, just in case we're not all packed up or something. Okay. Well, we won't be in the park at that time. And I can change it as well. So my right. question was going to be, this one's going to have a bar too. Yes. So you need a liquor permit for this? Yes. Do we bring out a bladder? Well, he submitted it, but it seemed like it was putting the horse before the cart, that you had to approve the use there, of the right. cart. So, you, so uh, to, to do that before you approve the liquor license. Right. So we could do that at a later date, the liquor permit. Absolutely. Um, yes. Absolutely. So I, I will just mention um, one of the concerns, so I just bring it up right away, was uh, that we had uh, a local cannabis company as a sponsor written in the application, uh, Green Mountain Cannabis. Um, and I just, for clarity's sake, um, I'd like to let, let everybody know that um, these events that I do put on are very costly. And what we try to do is bring on local sponsorship for the events. Um, to help us uh, produce the best show for the public as possible. Um, Matt is uh, Green Mountain Cannabis, new business in town, um, just because he is a sponsor for our event. Um, and I do believe, and it's not written down yet because it's not clarified yet, but Lost Nation Brewery very possibly is going to be a sponsor for this event as well, as long as the catering is approved. But the new company in town, the um, the kind of yeah, the one yeah, yeah, we, we know, yeah, we yeah, know, we know Matt. Matt. Yeah. Um, what it is for him is it's it's a it's a meet and greet. It's a mm -hmm. chance for him to educate. 
it's a chance for him for people to know what his new business is and i do believe that he has some competition in town because it, or, or the county in the last few weeks i've had four different cannabis companies approach me on different retrospects of sponsoring music not in the oxbow park but right. possibly at um, our store in morrisville or the one in johnson um, it's a new business that's here um, for this event in september the only thing that the company would be doing is possibly um, giving out a sticker a t-shirt um, explaining who they are saying hello marketing mm -hmm. it has absolutely nothing to do with smoking or smoking cannabis in the Oxbow Park. Thanks for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, Trisha has written. This is great for our community. The more the park is used, the less problems we will have. I would like to talk regarding sponsors if there are any questions about sponsors. Are there any questions about sponsors? Thanks, Tricia. Well, I think our policy is pretty clear. There's no tobacco use, so there wouldn't be any um, you know, marijuana use either, smoking. So it covered. It that already, is correct. It's right. already covered. And Jason knows, knows that. That is correct. And if you go back um, maybe four years ago, there was an incident in the parking lot where somebody I was smoking marijuana where you parked the cars yeah. and they were ticketed they were as yeah. as they should have been yeah. um I, i'm here to to make you all happy with what i'm doing i think that we bring something good to the community um whenever i'm in situations personally where people smoke whatever they smoke and usually what i say in johnson because i have that big outdoor space is i don't really care what you smoke but i don't want to see it I don't want to see it near any of these people. I don't want to see it near the kids. That's, I just don't like that. It, it has to be a cordial thing. So um, that is how, how I operate with it. Thank you. Sure. Any questions for Tom about this? Don? Yeah, the, the question I have, Tom, and maybe for the select board is, it's not about the actual use of tobacco or cannabis on site that's pretty clear that, that that's not what we're looking for but it's the the advertising and I, I just um, I, I'm just going to play the devil's advocate perhaps a little bit and maybe ask the board about the history of the use of the oxbow how would we have responded to the advertisement of tobacco products at the oxbow uh, not the use of them but the but the advertisement of them in the past. So maybe that's something that's been already set precedent. And I'm just bringing this up. It's certainly caught the attention of other people that there would be uh, advertising the new cannabis company. And, you know, Matt and I have talked and um, I, I love Matt and I love the idea of the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting the business right now, but I just want to just want to know how the rest of the board and perhaps how Tom feels about that. Well, I know it's been legalized state state level, so I'm not opposed to it. Well, I guess also, um, do you mean, Don, can I ask a clarifying question? Do you mean um, like the the quality and the type of advertising? Like I'm imagining when you're saying advertising of tobacco at Oxbow Park, I'm imagining like um, whether or not we're going to allow um, the the logo and what the logo says and whether or not it's going to be appealing to young people I, and I guess we haven't really regulated that yet um, and I think that's the big concern is that if we're um, you know what what size and how appealing the cannabis logo looks to kids I think that's the big question well if so I, I I guess if you yeah I, I is that part of your question, Don? Or well, I'm not so worried about the logo, and I've, I've certainly looked at what Matt's suggesting. I, I'm just—I guess my question is: Would we 
allow tobacco companies to come in and um, support and advertise at an Oxbow event when it's a tobacco free zone. I just want to I just want to make sure we're having the conversation and not disregarding a potential conflict of interest here. Or conflict. I guess, and, and I, guess I kind of I thought about this a little bit, and one of the one of the th things I was thinking about is that um, alcohol is a permitted I'm going to call it drug. <laughs> it's illegal addictive. depressant. It's, it's a, a it's, it's a legal. Um, uh, Thing that can can go awry and, and 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 people get addicted to it as cigarettes as marijuana, and um, I guess I would have I'd, I'd be thinking about how they were using the advertisement with, if you're talking about cigarettes, um, because we have medicinal marijuana, we have uh, uh, it's used uh, sometimes as a, a way of uh, medically used. So it's not always bad. Cigarettes are just <coughs> bad. They're, they're addictive and they, they kill people. And uh, they kill people, they kill you if I'm using next to you consistently. So I have a different thought process about cigarettes as opposed to um, alcohol and marijuana. Not saying that I approve of the consistently consumption of them, but that's where my thoughts are, if that makes any sense. Well, I was going to say, I, I, what you say, you got two sponsors. One, one you know you got, and the second one. Right. Okay, so one's got cigarettes. The other guy makes and sells alcohol. Well, it's not cigarettes necessarily. Cannabis. Well, cannabis. It may be okay. edibles. It may be cannabis. You know. Excuse me. We can't say so One's got this, and the other one's got. So you got them two both there. Uh, I just don't know why it's any different. Unless we make an ordinance later on, but at this point, I yeah. Yeah. See, I kind of agree. I think Judy was going that direction. I, I just, I just wanted to clarify one more time that it, it is a smoke-free park, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, I, that is what you all decided here. Right. Um, and the signs are clear in that park, mm -hmm. but um, there's tobacco use, there's marijuana use, there's medical marijuana. Um, there is also hemp, there is CBD. Now, these companies have already been in the Oxbow Park. They've been there as well. They have sponsored events. They have been at farmers markets. That, there is a method of smoking that as well. It's considered more medicinal, say, if somebody would explain, it's not the high, but it's still the medicinal and the, the new cannabis company when i went over to see the new company it looks great and they're in the middle of putting an industrial kitchen in there the industrial kitchen is used to bake products that you don't smoke you eat so mm -hmm. educationally i don't believe a cannabis new cannabis business in town is really sending that message. Go out and smoke marijuana. There's a lot more to this mm -hmm. than that message. Um, it's, but, it's tough because, like, on the other side of that, I think hitting on what Jess was driving at is, I, I wouldn't want to see stickers from cannabis handed out to children either. Right. You exactly. Know, you know, if you're, if you're gonna have a marketing information, whether it's a sticker or a t-shirt or a hat or whatever, don't hand them out to kids, you know, you know, that kind of thing, you know, right. it should be more, you know, at least 18 year olds or something like that, well, you know, that, that may be what Don's touching on about, you know, what, what are we looking for, you know, we don't want to be handing out, you know, cannabis gummy stickers to every kid that's running around the Oxbow. Well, the, 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 uh, the breweries, the liquor places and, and, and the wineries and, and the cider places, they all have stickers. Right. They all hand them out. Right. You have to be 21 years old to consume alcohol. Right. You have to be 21 years old to purchase cannabis products, yeah. I believe. Right. Possibly. Right. <laughs> Tony, you had a comment. Well, it looks like Trish, Trish has been waiting to talk for a long time. Oh. You're on, Trisha. Just a second. Yeah, I'm on you. 
I have to say, and I'm listening to this conversation, and I actually had a conversation with Tom Moog before this all came before the board, because I also have all of my events done through sponsorship. You know, it's not taxpayer dollars on the whole. I mean, there may be a little bit of taxpayer dollars. And we have always had our, our local breweries, our local distilleries sponsor this event. I, I am behind this 110%. What these people are doing, like Tom doing music events in our park, is it, it's keeping, like I said, our park active. It's keeping, it, it, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter who's sponsoring it. They're not, they're not the person that's saying smoke pot at Oxbow Park. They're a sponsor, just like, you know, and you all know Scotty at the uh, backyard, uh, whatever it was, uh, the place behind the bar yeah. was T. Well, he was not, but Scotty also sponsored events. Yeah, you know, but he did sponsor events in town. There was no discussion about whether to, he could sponsor something. You know, he he wrote a check to the town of Morristown. And, you know, what he did is what he did. When It's different when you're talking, I believe, about a sponsorship for an event or someone who's going to have a smoke fest at Oxbow Park. I think what Tom is doing here is fabulous. I think the more events we can have in our community, the better our community is. I agree, too. I, I, I've all supported everything you've done. <coughs> Every event you put on, 100%. But by the same token, I wouldn't want to see Marlboro sponsor this event. Right. You know, I mean, you say it doesn't matter who the sponsor is. Well, Marlboro Cigarettes is going to sponsor this event at the Expo. How does the town like that? Well, I, so is that a question like, is that a, um, an ordinance or something that we have to come it's up with? It's not, so Tom's talking right, about it. Yeah. But, well, that's a, but that's separate from what yeah. we're dealing with with yeah. Tom, I think. Yeah, I understand that somebody somebody to Mar Marlboro is not a local company by any means. Right, you know, right. I, I, it's not like we have tobacco fields out here in right. Memorial County. Yeah. Um, Tony, you've been waiting for a while. Go ahead. It hurt me. I was going to donate a 1970 Marlboro sign. <laughs> and I was going to donate a Lucky Strike sign. Yeah. And I was going to help you out. I could have congregated all the old people over here and you could have had the kids. <laughs> okay. there's, there's nothing, um, no part of me wanted to come in here to condone smoking of any kind right. for, right. for, uh, I for know what that. we're doing. Uh, we, we know that. We yeah. want to give you a show in town. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think people really need that right now. They mm -hmm. need music right yeah. now. I've yeah. seen uh, the way people have been dealing the last couple of years. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we love what you've done to this town. Yeah, you know, thank we love you. all these. Yeah. I would like to mold it and shape it um, for your, for Morrisville to take this, um, mm -hmm. so that we can do these events safely. Um, and I'd like to work hand in hand with this town. Right. And as the town gets bigger, um, you know, these events can grow, and they can grow right. by communication between all of us. Yeah. And when uh, somebody hmm. else goes to have an event in town we've the platform that we have written for the oxbow park is just going to get better yeah. and better and more detailed right. and every problem that comes up is going to get solved right. in a way that is great for this town i've um i have a question just a really um, basic question about like the growth of the festival and mm -hmm. um i'm wondering if you ever consider um creating incentive for people who ride their bikes or walk to the festival um, instead of, and I'm just looking at the number, estimated number of cars, 250. I don't know if that's ever a traffic issue. Um, and yeah, if, if there's any way to promote, um, you know, people walking or riding their bikes. Absolutely fabulous. The yeah. river is right yeah. there. The yeah. bike path is right there. Yeah. Um, I would prefer right, right. that everybody was riding their bikes. Well, like, yeah, like for like some them. events, you know, like there'll be a, you know, like, Get a whatever you know, redeem a voucher for whatever if you if you show up with your bike. I don't, or if you have like bike parking or you know just something to think about. I I think I I love your events. Um, just something to think about in terms of promoting more foot traffic and less you know less car traffic. Um, I would be happy to do that. I'll be happy to work with anybody on that. And as I said, 
I just want to work with the town yeah. to um, to do these events. I think it's I do think it's better to do two events this year instead mm -hmm. of one. I see the town growing, and um, I don't know if Nick and I don't ask to do the event. I think somebody else will. Yeah. And I and I and I like doing it at the speed we're doing it, so that we can all educate ourselves exactly on what we're doing. And I like to see everybody from the town there because those are the people that give me the feedback for what we're doing. And that's exactly how I run my restaurant. Uh, I ask, how was your burger today? <laughs> you know, I, I need to know if it's okay. Um, or I need to know if we have to adjust things in our business to make people happy. Um, it has to appeal to most everybody. It has, it has to have some good to it. So. All right. I mean... Any other questions for Tom about this event? I really like, as I said before, that you work with the law enforcement. You know, I know you have since the very beginning, and absolutely, you have, you've got that conversation with them, and you know, check with them. And Jason's nodding his head because that's the way to go about it. You know. Thank you. I think Don has a question. Don, go ahead. So I just want to be clear. I, you know, Tom and Nick and Matt, if you're listening. I, I support this festival. I think it's a great idea. I just wanted to make sure we had this conversation because right at the top of the page where it talks about rules and regulations, it says governing our smoke tobacco free park. And I just wanted to make sure the board had that conversation and we've had it. And uh, Trisha, I agree with you 100%. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Thanks for bringing that up. So, do I hear a motion regarding this? I make a, a motion to approve um, the Oxbow Music Festival September edition um, paperwork application. Second. I have a motion by Jess and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. So I may come down to see your two new signs that you get from the guy back there. <laughs> oh, the two, the two new yeah. signs. Yeah. Uh, I'll, come, I'll come if I'm here. I may be in Europe, but if I'm here, I'll come. Uh, thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. I won't let you down. All right. Next, uh, approve resolution renewing participation in Lamoille Fibernet Communications Union District and appoint a representative to the board. Jeez, Jane, welcome. Uh, John Meyer is here too. He's the alternate. Hi, John. And I'm the representative. I thought I recognized that face. That's right. <laughs> These are one year terms, so it was about a year ago you appointed us. Thank you very much. We like the opportunity to represent Morristown. Um, I won't give you a big update because I was just here a couple months ago, but you may have seen in the papers that we have uh, negotiations going on with Google Fiber as potentially our first licensee on the network. We'll still own the network, we'll still maintain it. Um, essentially, we're building the highway and hoping to generate some an open network and, and competition. So we're still aiming that later this year we'll have, do our first building and our first few customers um, we recognize that there are delays with fiber and personnel. We were part of the fiber pre-purchase that a lot of the CUDs in Vermont did. And we are um, <clears throat> working with Northwest CUD. Uh, they also were talking to Google Fiber, so just to be more effective money-wise and more efficient, we're kind of partnering together in those negotiations. So next we're going to be doing RFPs for poll studies and um, hopefully finalizing these negotiations, and that's where we are. I'm happy to take questions, but we're mostly just here to ask you to reappoint us. Sheila, you have a question? Yeah, my question is, when is anybody ever going to come up with Cody Hill I know. or Fiber or anything? That's that everybody's question. <laughs> I know. Every little dirt road has nothing. Yes. Well, that's why these CUGs are started, because it's right. not profitable for the for-profit companies to do these places where it's so sparsely populated. Yeah? Um, we're just finalizing our high-level plan that will tell us which areas to do first. We'll probably first go into the areas that will generate the most revenues so that then either they, they have the least service or the best take rates or whatever, and then we can use that money to build the next section and the next section and the next section. So that's 
That's what it shows. So my house probably just maybe twenty years from now I'm dead. Oh, well, I don't think it's twenty years. No, we're we're aiming for a three to five year goal. I was told by somebody that is very inept at computers and everything else, he said, unless Cody Hill has 3,000 people on it, we will never get fiber. Well, that's why the state started these CUDs, because these sparsely populated areas, they're just not profitable for a for-profit. Um, we've got... Um, but we're going to pay as much as everybody else, so... We are, but right now, fortunately, really fortunately, there's a lot of work money to get it started. Um, no, I meant like everybody on Cody Hill that needs it badly is going to pay the same amount somebody else that has a thousand people in it. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to have a monthly fee. Yes, but I think that monthly fee, we don't know yet, but I think it's going to vary a little bit according to the region and how populated we So we're going to pay more. I don't know. <laughs> I do know. If we are successful in our negotiations with the voters, they are offering, uh, and again, negotiations are still going on, but they're talking about a rate you. for people who qualify for the federal affordability connectivity program. They're talking about a $30 a month rate for those folks. So there's, a, there's because that, you know, broadband has gotten internet, high speed internet, it's gotten to the point where we all need it. Yeah. And it's not fair to the folks that are at the low income no. level to not be able to get it. No. So it's we're terrible. doing our best. And I don't know where Cody Hill is in the mix of whatever you know, you know, you know, you know, we're all the same. Ask me in about a month no. if that's our high level plan. She's not saying she doesn't know where it is. She's saying she doesn't know where right. it is in terms of when it gets fired. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't know. I don't know when we're going to get to you. Yeah. We need to buy gravel before we buy that. <laughs> Agreed. Any other questions? Thanks, Jane. Thank you. I, I was just Thank curious. You. Yeah. How is the fiber getting to people? Is it being strung on? Is it be underground? Is question. it going on wires? If there are poles. It goes on the poles, right. and it's it's a crazy world. I'll tell you, if you have to get everybody who has something attached to that pole out there to each pole, and look at it and say, yes, the pole's in good enough shape, and this needs to be moved up, and that needs to be moved down, and, and then you go to the next pole. Right. That's if there are poles. That's the cheap way. If it's underground, like it is on my road, um, it costs twice as much per mile. We have poles. <laughs> she says, just say it. We have lots of uh, It's like, uh, don't quote me on this, it's like 30000 a mile if it's aerial and twice that if it's underground. Wow. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, well, if thank you. Polls. Thanks for coming, Jane. So we thank have, you. We'll so, there's a piece of paper I need y'all to, if you would sign it and say Do you have it? Is it this? Yes. So this is to nominate the two of you? That's to reappoint, yeah. reappoint John for yeah. another term. Thank you very much. Do we have to make a motion for that? Yes. 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 I'll yes. make the motion. We do. <laughs> is, that, is that the motion? Yes. No. 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 It's the resolution. I don't think you want me to read So your motion is to... It's a motion to reappoint Jane Campbell. Reappoint Jane Campbell yes. and John Meyer. John Meyer to the board Good to sign represent more Yes. Was that your motion? <laughs> Is there a second? Who seconded that? Who just go to? Second? Anybody second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Thank you all. All in favor say aye. Aye. Don? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, James. Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Yes, thank you, thank you. Can, and can people find out more about it and follow the... Can people find out more about it and the progress on your website or where would uh, they on look? On our website, okay. all our meetings are open. They're part of our public entity. Okay. And the meeting schedule on the website. Okay, and yeah. what is the website? Uh, MoyleFiber.net. Okay. Yeah. That would be a good thing to put in the minutes, too. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Memorialfiber.net. Okay. Are you taking that thing? I'm going to have Bob sign it. I'm going to go sign it. I just emailed him. Yeah, or I want a copy. Thank
Yes. Yeah, it's right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jane. Well, no, it's a plastic bag. All right. Maybe it's a bag. Next, we have Brew the Financing for the 2023 International Dump Truck. Um, I got three bids. Union Bank is 2.49%. Community Bank is 2.88%. Community National Bank is 3.79%. I recommend you go to the Union Bank as you will pay the lowest amount of interest. Sounds good. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I make a motion we approve Union Bank at 2.49. I have a motion from Brian and a second, second. by Judy. Yes. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Next, number four. Discuss writing a letter of support for the town of Worcester in regard to the south cell tower process. This is something that came across my desk. Actually, I had a phone call from Dr. John Keating, who lives in Worcester, and he's also on the select board in Worcester. He's a retired doctor now. And he was, he's really up in arms, as is uh, most of the Worcester residents, about the fact that um, this industrial wireless technology from Massachusetts is able to build a tower via eminent domain in Worcester. And it's uh, on, he's, he's an adjacent landowner, but they've done um, extensive uh, research and they've gone through the state and the state regulatory, regulatory process allows for these towers to be built by eminent domain. And it's a 300 foot tower and John is asking for a letter of support from Morristown Select Board, as he is from um, other neighboring towns, um, just to to let people know that um, these towers can be built regardless of the the process in municipal law, municipal zoning. And do you, have you heard anything about this, Todd, as far as zoning goes? <laughs> So, <laughs> you, took the, you took away my speak part. Okay. So, in full disclosure, Todd approached me about a month ago with a request for outside work oh, as yes. per our policy. I'm your consultant. Sorry, I knew that. Okay. He is a consultant for a landowner up there, uh, working with an attorney to uh, get the, uh, the landowners in opposition up the tower. So, yeah. in full disclosure, that's Todd's uh, on the sideline. So. Yes, I did know that. I, I forgot that you were involved on that level. but. From what I hear, there's nothing that, that, that we can do, nothing that the folks of Worcester can do, except for join together with letters of support to fight it, because they say they're coming this way, too, that like Morristown is, is not far away from, from these kind of towers being built without, without our consent, the townspeople. So, so somebody, just a private property owner, can sell their property to this company. Or lease it, a, yeah. Lease it, and a tower can be put up, and nobody in town can stop it. That's right now. It's exempt from local zoning, yes. Yeah. Because Eminent it domain. Goes to, goes to the Public Utility Commission, and uh, generally, if the applicant can demonstrate a hole in coverage, a hole in the cell coverage, it's pretty easy to get a permit unless you can show it's an undue adverse impact to the local surroundings, environmental impacts, those kind of things. So, how does this, how does this affect our, our CUD group that's okay. working on FiberNet? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it kind of compete with what we're doing here? Honestly, I think fiber is going to replace a lot of cell coverage personally. I don't have a crystal ball for the future, but right. I'm not sure how important cell towers are in the future if everyone's got fiber and voice over internet. Right. You don't need the cell tower as much. It is competing, though. It is. For right now, yes. Different. I agree. Okay. Uh, and so what John's asking is a letter of support from us, and I'm, I'm totally for that if, if yeah. the folks would be willing to, to do that. I don't know if we need a motion regarding that, but. I would appreciate that, yeah. yeah. I'll uh, draft a, a letter. Don, you have any comment about that? No, I think it's a great idea, Bob. I, I, when I was reading what you said, I was kind of surprised how easily that company was able to move in on Worcester. Wow. Yeah, I, I was, I was uh, kind of upset because I actually had a, had a meeting with the governor. I talked to him for a couple hours, and it was a bummer. I, did, I got the call from John the next day. It would have been a perfect opportunity to, 
to talk to Phil about it. And um, I am still going to try to email a couple folks down there that I know. You and Phil on first name basis now. Yeah. I, well, actually, funny story about Phil Scott. He worked on my motorcycle when I was a kid. He used to have a motorcycle repair shop right on Main Street here with Eddie Minaj. Huh. And when I was a kid, he used to work on my on my KH400 Kawasaki. Huh. And uh, of course, I've been following him at the racetrack for 20 years. But um, yeah, I know I know Phil pretty well. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> anyhow, I, I'd like to see us do that. So can yeah. we get a motion regarding that? Uh, I make a motion to write a letter of support uh, for the town of West Worcester to oppose uh, the impending cell tower. I have a motion by Jess. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion about this? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I will follow up with John. I told him I'd give him a call. Talk about it. All right. Next, approve. The rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate boards and committees. All right, who's? Okay, you took care of the dump truck while I was out of the room. Yes. 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 Oh, We're going to read you yeah. the bag. Sarah handled that. Good job. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there's revised, for the last discussion of the select board meeting, there's uh, revised rules mostly under uh, number four in your package for tonight regarding stipulating a process for what exactly happens when there is a vacancy to be filled, and that's kind of what this, that's what this write-up legislates. So, happy to make any changes, or happy to take a vote back? So this is, this is just to redo what this we already have. This is for Jess's comments from the last week. Yeah. I've bounced you back and forth with Jess a couple of times. Yeah. And with Ability a couple of times, Ability takes some concerns. Besides the language, I think everyone's on board. That's a take make proclamation, so here's part one, but I think we're okay. Yeah. No. Sound good, Jess? Yeah, it looks good to me. Yeah. I so have a question about number 14 on page 2. Yes. Don't we already have a conflict of interest policy? I believe you might. I'm not sure. This was written in two. This was first adopted by the select board in 2012. Yeah. Before you had a policy. If you do have a policy that covers the DRV in, in planning council, in theory, that we could, we could remove that. I think so. Don't we, team? Didn't uh, that what we just signed? I do not want to remove We do have one, but I don't know if it covers that. Uh, it's, it's more of something that I think for employees, and I'm not sure how it applies to our, our boards other than... Appointed people, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure the trustees have adopted one. I'm, I'm not sure they have, so that's why it's still in there. Okay. No, that's fair. Uh, do we that's need a motion? I had. Want a motion regarding this? I make a motion to pass the um, updated rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate boards and committees. I have a motion by Jess. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, number six, discuss application to the DRB in regard to the waiver of 23 required on-site parking spaces, nephew building. So uh, I suggested this uh, here on the select board agenda. I think the DRB would be prudent to, for the select board, to send the DRB a project comment letter from the select board regarding availability of the parking lot. I know the select board is about to spend a bunch of money to uh, Reviewed the parking lot lines and expanded and uh, curved in a couple of small areas. And uh, it's a significant ask for a waiver. They're asking for no on site parking, 19 units, and uh, four of those parking spaces are for the commercial ground floor retail, retail space facing Portland Street. That's a, that's a lot of spaces. I mean, what percentage of the lot is that? Of uh, the new lot, I think there's what 108. I'd have to look at my. Yeah, change. We haven't gotten the revised plan from Tyler because the revised plan will also take into account the back side of the brewery as far as uh, we're going to lose some spots on that original plan. Yeah, so I know it was 100, it's just over 100. Yeah, somewhere around there. I mean, normally parking waivers are done when uh, one little storefront goes in, another goes out. I mean, you're not asking, for example, the, uh, uh, the dog grooming place. They're not. That's in the corner of the DeMont Capitals building right here. You're not asking to supply on-site parking. There's no on-site parking there. It's normally a small business, but this is a significant request, and 
This is the first time we've got a request with no on-site parking for folks. To be fair to the nephew family, though, there is no availability for on-site parking on the property that is a removed part of the building. The building is built like this building is to the property lines. Mm -hmm. um, what is, so I'm looking at you, Judy, because I know that you know a lot about the Hutchins Street building. <laughs> I'm so, I, and I don't need to put you on the spot, but um, I guess I'm just looking for some like history or precedent. Um, what, um, like does the Hutchins, um, the Hutchins Street building have on-site parking as well, or it's, it's solely units like that? I know there was a deal um, where we allotted municipal parking, but is there also on-site? Or no, there's, there's a couple. There's two on site. Two spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Todd would know that. The, and okay. the, they, the, um, Law Housing Partnership, uh, joined into an agreement with the town right. to pay, I think, about half, thirty three thousand, thirty five thousand. We pulled the MOU up today, and there is no dollar amount in the MOU. Oh, I thought there was. It was thirty five thousand. Thirty five thousand yeah. dollars, but there is no dollar amount in the MOU. Talk about this in another meeting. Okay. Okay, but there was an agreement okay. that they are going to be paying. Right. It was about a sizable amount of money. Right. That's what I reconfigure the parking lot. Right. Because to me, it seems like there should be a give and take. If I can clarify, just yeah. a little bit on it. This was on a full parking waiver. This, for the the exchange of the money to help with the redo of the parking lot, was right. to secure not parking. There's no guaranteed daytime parking in that parking lot at any all. time of the year. Right. Right. The 16 slots that the board agreed. To permit to residents of the building are for winter overnight parking only. Right. Okay. That is the only stipulation that was granted by the board. That's right. Oh, because they can't park on the street. Because there's a parking yeah, so ban. Policy, okay. a parking ban. You don't allow off street parking. You don't allow one side of right. the street. Or right. you don't do snow emergency. Or you say no on street parking. Yeah. Okay. Which creates larger parking lots, obviously, on private property. Yeah, you're right, Jess. Okay. Um. And then what's the, is there a backstory or is there like a context for um, this request? And, and do we feel like they won't want to rehab the building if they don't get the parking spot? Uh, I don't really want to speak for the nephew yeah, family. Right, so yeah. um, what I can tell you is that um, for the Hutchin Street project came in, I got up every morning at 530 to count the cars in the open space in the parking lot. And I did every night before I went to bed at 1030 at night for probably about <laughs> seven months. <laughs> That was my wow. <laughs> and there were, uh, on, on generally, it's the winter parking ban that drives the parking issue. There's really not a parking issue, but there's a winter parking ban during the November 15th to May 15th time period because the select board doesn't allow any on street parking. Uh, so at that time, the thought process was a 24 unit building in Hutchins Street, based on their other buildings, there may be about 12 cars parked there because generally it's about half of your units have cars and other projects around town. So we basically said, we only have eight overnight spots, there's not enough. We can make, we can use this parking lot more uh, smartly by restriping it to have capacity there and move a couple of small curves. So they agreed to split the cost of that to re-engineer it and repay the parking lot with the select board. That's why the select board was involved. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, there is a, and that gave, that parking lot restriping created another, another uh, 18 or so overnight spaces. So basically they didn't use up the capacity in this case, in my opinion, as a guy who's been out there at 5.30 in the morning, 10.30 at night, I don't think there is enough capacity for overnight spots under the current parking regime for this waiver, in my opinion. But right. uh, I'm not the DRB. I don't vote on the project. But the DRB, I'm sure, is, uh, would like to get a comment letter from the select board regarding it's your parking lot. The DRB doesn't own it. It's your asset. The select board owns the property. So yeah. if you think there's adequate capacity, you can send the DRB a letter stating such. If you think there's not enough capacity, you could send that to the DRB or say parking lot improvements need to be made to further create more capacity. Whatever you want to do, the select board can, should submit a comment letter and the DRB members were told not to be on this call tonight, not so they don't uh, participate outside the public hearing process. So whatever the select board decides will be in a letter that letter will be submitted during the public hearing process once the hearing opens on April 27th for the DRB. I'm feeling like it's tough for us to decide because we don't have any sketch of how the parking lot's going to be configured. Because it's going to be reconfigured, and we don't know what that. That's not really. Yeah. The other is that um, we had talked. We, had, I think you had brought up the the idea of maybe doing a permit, of having some kind of permitting process for overnight parking there, that we haven't we haven't we decided. Haven't but, but it was just in a brainstorming process. I think we're mixing up. 
the topic here. This is not about when I went to parking. This is a DRE permit application. Okay. They're requesting a full waiver mm. of the requirement for any parking on site. That's what the DRB is going to be as part of the permit. Is that right? Correct. The so this is, parking is the shortfall. There is there is a, a deliberation about the project and can we secure us home night winter parking. Okay. This is their okay. request of a full waiver. All right. We don't have to provide any parking for twenty three slots. Okay. All right. Seems to me like we're being asked to provide a waiver, and I think somebody's already alluded to this, and we don't really have all the information that we might need to make this decision. Is there any way to pass uh, pass the buck on to the the, the uh, those that are pushing for this uh, project to provide the information, provide a study, provide some proof that the 23 spots really do exist somewhere else? Can I answer that, Don? Go ahead. Don, to clarify, the DRB grants the waiver, not the select board. I just thought it would behoove us for the select board to submit a comment letter on the project for the DRB. It's a significant downtown project. It's, it's a significant waiver request. It's the largest waiver request we've ever had for that municipal parking lot. So it's not the select board's permit to grant or not grant, and not a waiver for the board to grant or not grant. It's the DRBs. The DRB acts as judges in a quasi-judicial process. It'll be up to them to submit information, the applicant submit information, the DRB to grant the waiver based on the information presented. And one of those information pieces, I think, should be a comment letter from the select board. That's what we're talking about tonight. Do you want to comment on the project? And you have another meeting to do it. Okay. The DRB opens on the 27th. You've got April 4th tonight, April 18th. So, at, in theory, if you don't want to miss the DRB and have enough, if the board doesn't want to comment, that's fine. If the board wants an opportunity to comment, it, the letter should come out of this board by the letter uh, by the 18th of April. So, Todd, could our comment simply be that we have concerns about the waiver of these 23 spots? Sure. Your comments, the select board's comments, they can be anything they want to be. Yeah, I guess part of the concern for me would be setting a precedent. Yeah. If we're doing that, okay, maybe that's fine. But then, when did the when did the scales tip to the point where we just can't? Keep accommodating parking, exactly. but then my other question is: I know in the the um, the town plan that we're still <laughs> trying to get approved, um, there is language in there around building a um, a parking garage. I mean, I don't know how many years out that is. But, <laughs> About fifty. Yeah, I know. Um, but hmm. um, and or wondering if there are any other plans for options. Um, I know we had talked at some point about um, whether the the um, the property on the corner that used to be the gas station, if that would end up being a municipal lot. Um, you know, just wondering if there are other spots around town that could make us feel like... Oxbow. Yeah. yeah. The only other town on property is a small property at the bottom of Pleasant Street by Railroad Street and the Oxbow. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like Don, I guess I don't... Yeah. I don't want to make a decision until we have more information. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Tonight, yeah. What I don't, information are you looking for? I don't from know the that petitioner, or I'm not sure. What, so what, is there, are you looking for research from me or from the nephew family? I don't think there's any more information we need because I don't know, the nephews don't. we have the parking lot and they're asking for 23? 23. Is there is a need under zoning, yes. So there's one space per unit, they're asking for 19 units of housing. Uh, those two, uh, those two floors, and then the the four parking spaces based on the square footage for the commercial space needed. So when when you're talking about the commercial space, do they have to provide parking since there's on street parking for the front of the building? The, your, the zoning bylaw doesn't allow because it doesn't give credit for any street parking. You guys don't because the select board doesn't allow on street parking during the winter. That's your policy. Okay. The zoning bylaws do not give credit for on street parking because it's only available. For but so it wouldn't, it's going to be, it's supposed to be on-site parking or waived in a municipal lot. It wouldn't, but if you're talking about a business, so that wouldn't be, the on-street parking would be okay because they're not open at night. They're not Everybody parking yes. there. So quite often that parking lot, the waiver is more for business uses. Uh, it's less common for the overnight residential uses. So really your point, you have the 23 spots. The four commercial ones, uh, I think, are far subordinate to the 19, 19. primary overnight spots they're asking for. 
And they're asking, so they're asking for a waiver, which would say like we they wouldn't be required to to provide on-site parking in in their footprint of their property. Which yeah, that makes sense. But then, are they also on top of that asking for 19 spots to be set aside and reserved for their um, their residents? That is not the ask. That 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 does I mean, that I isn't mean, the ask. I'm trying to make it very clear. There's no reserved parking. We don't right. reserve parking. I mean, right. There's uh. If they're trying to be development X, Y, or Z and right. reserve spots, that's not going to work. Based on the process now, we, we're not, there's no spreadsheet saying there's three spots available in this building. Has right, it. yeah. It's based on first come, first serve, what's out right. there right now. So if they could get a, they get a permit from the DRB on the 27th, and another developer comes in two months from now and builds their building before the nephews, the nephews could be out of line. But there's no capacity to lot. Yeah, right. I don't want that. No. But you want then, to box them in. Right. But then the other question is, um, I mean, and, and this isn't necessarily um, totally relevant to this question, but um, does the select board revisit the winter parking ban and do what they do? Um, and this is probably, this is a, a question for Kevin, and I'm, I know, I can see he perked up a little bit. I'm not saying do away with it, but um, is there, like when I lived in, um, when I lived in New York City, it was like you could, you know, park on this side of the street during these hours and this side of the street during these hours. I mean, that sounds complicated and like a, a, an enforcement nightmare. Usually all yeah. park on this yeah. side of the street this week, this side of the street the next yeah. week. Yeah, so that, but then, then you can't plow those spots. I mean, I, I think I'm answering my own question, but that's something, <laughs> you know. I get it. Yeah. Kevin, you want to apply on that or no? <laughs> um, Please don't. We're going to have to have a little bit bigger budget. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, see, like, if we decide now, we don't know what's going to happen to the nephew building. They could sell it to somebody that puts up another high rise, too, you know, and they want to have spots. You know, we can't, we don't have all the information we need to make a decision. I don't feel like. What? Well, what? aren't they, Aren't? isn't their application for a, Construction or renovation, or is it just this? Just speculative. No, they have a they, they have a process, they have a process. They have right. for yeah. 19 yeah. apartments. They range in size from right. 280 square feet yeah. to about 320 square feet each, right. and uh, the waiver 23 parking spots. That's what they're in front of the DRB for. The select board doesn't want to comment. That's okay, but I thought I would yeah. I thought I would give the select board an opportunity to give the DRB a comment about the parking yeah. lot before yeah. the DRB yeah. makes a decision yeah. without the select board. Doing yeah. Work. Well, I, for one, would love to see that building developed, and I know yeah. probably 99% of the town would, would feel the same yeah. way, but I, for one, also have big concerns over this waiver for 23 spots. I just don't know where the parking's going to go mm -hmm. without more information. Yeah. I agree. Trisha just added a comment. There is not space in the town municipal parking lot for these 23 spaces, during daylight hours at night, it would work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it seems like we should revisit it. Yeah. It w I mean, I thought it was always going to be first come, first serve. You know, that's the way it is. It's like the, the, that one electrical charging station. There's always that same car parked at it. You know, it's like first come, first serve. Is it is the overnight parking now for the winter, um, is it just a certain section? Yes, correct. Uh, that's what I thought. Just that one section that's uh, closest to the, the, the uh, church. There is a second section that I closed out for the winter because there were unused spots in the section you're referring to there was there was ample space there, okay, so yeah. we closed off the spots that are located along the end near Hutchins Street because the construction charges. vehicles were plugging up all the spots. I made them leave the EV station open for two parking spaces. They they put their connexes and two work trailers in the other spaces, so we closed off that from the parking. But we were not at capacity on the other end of the lot, so it worked out. Yeah. What's everyone want to do, Brian? I'm all right with wait because I don't think, um, first of all, I think it ought to be left first come first serve. It's a municipal parking lot, just like we've been doing. I mean, we've got several of them that way. <coughs> the Union Bank one, the one behind Arthur's, 
the library. You get there and park. You can park overnight in the library. Right. If you get there and you first. The Union Bank, our parking lot was Union Bank. Right. We lease it. We maintain it. We, we lease it. Is what I've been told way back. I've read the paperwork. The okay, well. Mm -hmm. Then we shouldn't be maintaining it if we're not leasing it. Cause we, they, pay us, we, yeah. they, pay they pay us to maintain it for them every year. Okay, they didn't when I first got on the board. We, there was a lease, is what I was told. Yeah. That, that did change. Told wrong. That did change, I remember okay. that. You're right, Brian, but it did change. I remember it somewhere along the line there. I'd have to agree with Trish that 23 cars parked there all day during the day isn't going to work. No. It is. At night, it's not a problem. It isn't going to work, everyone. I, I, I mean, I think there's some of us that are town staff that park there on a regular basis. I mean, we've always been encouraged to park there, and we've like been very courteous about the people, the businesses out on Bridge Street. I mean, on Brigham Street, that park on the back side, and I have encouraged our staff to be sure that they park in the municipal parking lot. And even before this construction, you know, you have to remember what's already out there. You, you know, you have the River Arch, you have MoCo, you have Pleasant Street Auto. Yes, Pleasant Street is going out. Um, but honestly, that parking lot is highly used. You have the Dance Academy, you have the daycare, you have the post office, and you have LCPC. You have, and all these people use that parking lot. I I have to be honest with you. I, I come in a little later some days and... I ride around a couple times, and sometimes I can't even park in the parking lot now. So I would, I would just ask you all to think very seriously about this waiver because I don't know that we have that capacity as a town. Right. Well, yeah. And then Ed Longton's basically saying the same thing. Um, is it time to seriously consider a garage? Which it's in the plan. But it's nice. It would be very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. Yeah. It is time yeah. to think about more parking. I, I I don't know how the town could support this right now. Twenty three spaces, and I I would encourage you all to please just take a walk around that parking lot. And I know there's a lot of construction vehicles in there right now, but you know you, we do have like I said, the MoCo and the other ones, even if we didn't have construction, we don't have capacity as a town of Morristown in that municipal parking lot for 23 more spaces. It is just not, I don't think it's feasible. Right. Ed's got a comment, like we, we uh, saw what I, you wrote. I have a question. Um, of course we want development, especially of that derelict old building, which has been an eyesore for a long time. If it's the one I'm thinking of, the one on the corner right across from Moogs. But um, uh, at the most crowded, the downtown area, which we want to promote, we want more activity, not less there. Um, uh, we, we should not, at this point, we should be calling a halt to activities that burden street parking more or the existing parking lots anymore. I frequently have a hard time going to the dentist on Brigham Street getting a parking spot. I park goodness knows where. On the other hand, uh, I'm confused. I just don't know the property well enough. Where would you put on the Nepview property uh, uh, 23 parking spaces? You where would they go? Hey, thanks, Ed. Uh that you could, I don't, you couldn't add, I think that's the point, is that the building um, takes up the entire um, property. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where would they go? They would have to go into the municipal parking lot and behind. Oh, but that's not their property to put, it doesn't require any parking spaces that's on the right. property. First come, first serve. That's why they're asking for the waiver. Right. I, they have no place to put parking spaces yeah. so <laughs> good luck with that then i suppose yeah all right what do you guys want to do and gals sounds like we have some concerns about providing 19 parking spots yes yeah. i don't feel Giving comfortable up. with the waiver tom you got a question I, tom said, um i have to agree with jess i mean 
the precedent of this would be, we don't know. Uh, Fulton Street Auto is down the road is going to go away. What could, what's going to come in there? Right. They're going to need parking. Right. This is our only parking space. We've got to be smart with it. Mm -hmm. We've got nothing else. We're not going to build it up any higher. But we don't have the money. So we've got to save what we got. And if we let this waiver get approved, I just we cannot go back and, and to someone else and say, well, no, we can't we can't give it parking. Uh, mm -hmm. it just it's just not a good uh, road to take right now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. There's the, the plus is the building may start looking presentable mm -hmm. and provide housing, which is good. I just, the, the parking's an issue. What about, um, I don't know if this is, has anything to do, well, with this process, but um, are there other spots in the area? Like, um, does the VFW lease? Um, parking? No. 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 Try that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I know, was there any talk or thought about um, the parking near um, 10 Railroad? Like, can that be improved at all? I'm just thinking, like, okay. where, you know, I'm, because I would love to see this building rehab. And I, like you're saying, like, I think everyone in town would. Mm -hmm. You could look at yeah. parking down at the Oxbow, more more actual right. structured parking. Either you're never the, gonna you're never gonna get yes. would be what either one of those suggestions to improve the bottom of Pleasant Street by right. Ten Railroad or the Oxbow for this could be part of your comment on their Right. Months. Okay. That that would be part of their process. It's part of your comment when you can suggest that the DRB and then the applicant can do what they want with it. Maybe say they'll run with it. Maybe they'll say they're opposed to it. And then right. The RV will make a ruling on the waiver based on all the information they, they gather in here. Okay. What do you say, Trish? I hear you you talking about the Oxbow Park. You're never going to get someone who lives in the Nephew Building to park at Oxbow Park. Okay? Um, and we've all watched this over the years. People on the whole are not willing to park within eight car lengths of where they live. I mean, I think maybe it's 10. Todd maybe could answer wow. that question a little bit further. But you, you're you never, ever going to get someone who lives in the Nephew building to park at Oxbow Park. Well, I mean, if if the downtown becomes a lot more populated, then that's exactly what's going to have, have to happen. I mean, I, I think as we become a bigger town, like right. the luxury of parking right at your house kind of goes away. I mean, I, I don't say, I'm not saying it's not a pain. I'm not saying it's not... Yeah undue burden on older folks or people who have mobility issues, but. Mm -hmm. But Jess, I, in all of you, I want you to think, you know, if they're looking for a waiver for 23 parking spaces in our municipal parking lot, and I hear you all say it's a first come first serve. I think that you're, you are gonna hurt our downtown businesses by saying that they, it's a first come first serve and you're granting this waiver. Right. You're gonna hurt um, Peck's Flower Shop, you're gonna hurt Moss, you're gonna hurt the, the businesses that use that parking lot. Mo, uh, uh, Mogar who's coming in, Tom Moog that's there. I, I just want you to really be sure that this is, this is what you're thinking because I wanna be sure that we're, we're not hurting what business we already have. The last thing we want is to lose business in our downtown. Right, yeah. Oh, I, I'm That's why we're yeah. discussing it. That's why we can't come to a, any sort of agreement. That's why we're kicking the can around the room a hundred times. I, I, I get it, Bob, but I have to be the other side, you know, the, the community oh, side. Yeah. yeah. I think we don't need to make a decision uh, tonight because we could spend another hour doing it. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, I guess what I'm wondering, too, is, um, and I see Joshua Goldstein's on the call from the Planning Commission. Um, is that correct? He's on the Planning yes. Commission? Yeah. Um, if, there, if, there are, if there are plans in the works to develop more municipal parking, I, I mean, I don't know that that would inform this decision, but it's certainly, like, we're clearly going to come up against this yeah. more and more. Well, we have some other, we had some other ideas that have been in no. a plan for more parking. We re reconfiguring that municipal lot was 
came up with 13 more spaces. Right. We were going to add seven or nine down by Noise House Museum. Uh -huh. We talked about asking Peter Bourne if we could use the property that's beside Thompson's Flower Shop and make uh -huh. that level and put parking in there. Uh -huh. We came we up with like... That. Yeah. You can add some spots with angled parking. Yeah, I know. Angle is out. We decided not to do that, but we came up with like 26 spots. I, I went over this with Dan at one point. And um, there is some other things in the works. It could be that uh, the Pleasant Street Auto Building venture that, that goes away and becomes municipal parking. There's, a, no. there's some other things that could happen, but we're looking at what's happening right now, and I just feel like I don't want to sign any any waiver or grant a waiver for this we're not we're not granting the waiver folks this is about the board giving an, uh, an opinion on mm -hmm. the stress that that waiver the vrb may or may not grant right. would cause on the current parking situation so it's right. the board's letter would be of concern right. that would be submitted to the DRE for uh, review during that hearing. that way we pass yeah. the buck What's that? <laughs> not, right. But yeah, but I know, but to me, that's like the no, questions before us, a, you know? That's it's what the, the same guy line. on the screen talks, and I agree with him. Don, we so, can, so, so I agree that with Eric. Decision. I, I agree with Eric, and I, you know, I've got grave concerns about this thing. You know, there's a reason there's such so much parking uh, language in the town, town plan, and there's a reason for, as crazy as it sounds, an underground parking lot. Uh, under that municipal lot, um, because parking is such an issue. I suggest that what we can do tonight is write a letter of concern to the DRB, you know, just saying that we have grave concerns about this waiver. That sounds good. Like, I'll second it. And maybe um, while we support the development of that building, we have grave concerns. I can draft you a letter yeah. and we'll bring it on for an agenda item for next meeting. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, Don. Also, that we support looking into the development of municipal lots. Yeah. I like what Jeff said there, too. We, we, we want to see that building used, but. Yeah. I would likely keep this centric to the issue in front of the DRB rather than. Um, contemplative about the future of our parking wants and desires. Right. I don't want to muddy the issue. Okay. We're trying to be straightforward. So. Good yep. idea. Okay. All right. All right, Todd. Perfect, thank you. I didn't want to not give you the opportunity to comment on it. Right. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Todd. That's a big, yeah. So next is your discuss town plan select board revisions. Well, this is, uh, I guess I'm responsible for this. I, I had uh, the occasion to meet with Jason down at the police department last week and took me on a tour of the, of the police department in the building. And I know at least a few, at least two other people in the uh, town offices have expressed their concerns about a, pub, a new public safety building and the need for one. Walking through the police department building, it's pretty clear that things are pretty tight down there. That building was constructed uh you know there's a few people in the room that know this better than i do but was constructed for a much smaller police force in a different time and we 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 sorely need a a new public safety building and the town plan talks about a new field house uh, which would be a major expense it talks about a new highway department building which uh you know we're currently leasing off of old creamery road and We've got property up on Cochrane Road. Um, I just thought after talking to Jason and getting the tour of the building, and I haven't made it up to the fire fire building yet, but I, I plan to get up there. I just thought that uh, if we're gonna put the idea of a field house in the town plan, if we're gonna put the idea of a, highway, a new highway department building, and we just finished talking about an underground parking uh, facility that, I just felt this should be in there as well. The public safety building is at least as important as uh, as these other projects. So Todd, on our copy, um, we don't see any red. Could you read to us what it says? Sure, it's the last, just you can see it too. It's the it's last. Little, it's just hard to read. Yeah, it's the last four yeah. sentences right there. Okay. I'll read it to you. Thank so you. What Don's suggestion we had in the plan says as follows. This plan supports the future relocation 
of the current police station to a piece of land that is large enough to allow for the co-location of the police department and other town emergency service departments okay. in a single building. Okay. We are. Uh, well, the land acquisition and construction of this new well, church. Trish. 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 <laughs> well, the land acquisition and construction of this new shared building will come at a significant taxpayer expense. There are greater cost efficiencies to be had by relocating critical town services under one roof. Existing town emergency services have already started to upgrade their individual buildings, and it's inarguably, inarguably cheaper to build one large building that affords enough space for the town's emergency services to grow with its population than it is to construct individual buildings as each emergency service department outgrows their existing separate locations over the coming years. This is great, Don. This is something I've been talking about with Eric for the past year and a half or two years, wanting to have a police fire rescue building a lot like Stowe, Stowe did years ago under the same roof. And we also need a new highway building too, but we need this public safety building even more than that. Bob, can I just quickly add to that? Um, I, put, I, I suggested that we add this to the town plan because I was told it would not lengthen the town plan adoption process. I like that. I, I, did, I didn't bring that up because we can do something that's not in the town plan, and I didn't want to muddle it up any more than it has been with 26 revisions, but hearing that, I think that's fine to have it in there too. You're, you're right, we definitely need it. I, in my mind, that we need that more than anything else in this town. Um, but we don't have to have it in the plan to do it, right? Right. Correct. Because yeah. you said 26, I thought it said here 30. 30. Oh, I, I was just guessing. Okay, so, I was guessing. so that's my problem. I, I, to me, the plan is a vision. Uh, if we're looking at some, we can just add to the when we're discussing the, the other one, if we think that's what it needs. Um, but I do know what's gone on over the last quite a few years where, I mean, we went over here on the bypass and got that highway. And we thought if we can buy that, that's going to be a good thing. So it may not turn out that we end up with a new highway and we may keep that one. Mm -hmm. And maybe later we'll need to build a police department or we, on other can, land. can we add to it? Right. I mean, you know, rather maybe we can take that 3.7 acres and build a new public safety building. Yeah. We don't, we don't know yet. Yeah. So something I'm all right. They're looking at it down the road. I really hate to mess with this plan anymore. I mean, this is number 30. But. So Todd, is it going to, what does it do to the process if we adopt this? If the select board decides to adopt uh, Don language tonight, it doesn't, it doesn't slow down the process at all because I was able to push the village trustee hearing back another two weeks. So originally when Don came into office, this would have slowed the plan down because the trustee hearing was going to be within 15 days of tonight's meeting. I got to the newspaper in time, pushed the hearing back until May. So if you want to adopt this language tonight, I can get the plan on record in the clerk's office tomorrow. And we proceed with our hearings that I think are advertised for May 2nd and May 4th, like nothing ever happened other than this three sentences being added. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, I wish that, uh, well, Bill was, Bill Mapes was here to comment on it. I mean, this is, again, putting the cart before the horse, but my only question is, um, does it make sense to have an emergency so far away from the hospital? Does that no. matter? Is it better to have it in my building with um, fire and You're right. Bill should police. comment on yeah. it, but I wrote emergency so it was big, so if it just yeah. puts fire, that's okay. Yeah. I mean I think emergency maybe is okay up there, but if you, uh -huh. the select board decides in the year twenty twenty eight to we'll lump that in, right. That's the discussion you have at that time. Well, so the, other, one day. Okay. the other thing people have to realize is you don't respond to the hospital when you're called on a rescue call. You're responding to, to wherever right, it right, is. Right, right, right. And then you bring So it's hospital. really not necessary to be right next to the hospital. Right, right. right. And you know? one of the issues has come over the years if you put all these in together, I mean, you got to be careful where you put it because when the alarm goes off, you got everybody trying to get out right. of the driveway. You got to have a good traffic spot. Mm -hmm. So you know, if it's on the bypass, that might not be a good place to put it. Mm -hmm. So, but maybe there is a good place. I'm not. Yeah, we're talking about a few different. And places. I agree that. So, do we need to do a motion, Todd? You would need to make a motion if you want to adopt this addition to the plan. Yes. Okay. So, Don, you want to make the motion? Sure, I'll make the motion that we adopt the language as presented on page 26 of the current town plan. 
I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Motion is passed 4 1. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Okay, next. Is there any other town plan revisions? Is that it? That's it. The hearings in, uh, in May. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Well, next, approve warrant. <laughs> Take your motion. motion. Huh? That's a good Second. Ah, uh, understand that. Did you mute him? Who made the motion? I did. Brian. Who seconded? I did. Judy seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The warrants are passed. Ten administrators report. Uh, Kevin and Scott, you know, I met with uh, contingent from District 6 B Trans at their request. They are. Uh, reaching out in a very good faith effort to get to know folks in their areas. They have 35 towns in District 6. They're spread out through Central Vermont. Uh, and they came to us, wanted to know, first of all, how we made out during month season, and then was there, were there any issues out there that involved V-Trans or V-Trans roads that uh, we wanted to talk to them about? So uh, we sat in there and had a great exchange with them I brought up to them the intersection of 15 and 15A being poorly lit. Uh, the Stafford Avenue, Brooklyn Street intersection is poorly lit. We uh, eventually, as we see development and the sidewalk completed on Stafford Avenue between the bypass and Brooklyn Street, um, that we would like to see a crosswalk on Brooklyn Street other than the one, the only one we have, which is way down mm -hmm. uh, by Hanford's. Now, there are no crosswalks from there to Route 15, so people have, uh, you know, they, they try and cross the street there. They're running across open lanes without the, the protection of a crosswalk. Um, perhaps looking at a speed survey with the increased development in the north end of town, the curb cut increases we've seen over the years, the speed limit from Route 15 down to our village line, which is in the area of Professional Drive, is 40 miles per hour. With all the activity down through there, the lights help to regulate that somewhat, but uh, it may warrant us dropping the speed limit. So I've asked them to take a look at that section. It pretty much is all theirs, uh, as far as whether or not there should be a lowering of the speed limit for uh, safety reasons. Uh, Katie's Falls Bridge it fell off the radar somehow. I mean, I was under the assumption for years that Katie's Falls Bridge, when they found the weaknesses in the structure, uh, when they sandblasted and repainted it, that it was some some list at state level for replacement and in fact it's not on any list it's not on anybody's radar at all at the state level so mm -hmm. we're pushing forward with that uh, to see if we can't get some action even down the road i mean they lowered the speed limit the uh, weight went up to five ton which eliminated all large truck traffic through there um, it, it limits us on our options as far as what we as we develop and traffic is pushed out, it takes away a road that we could, you know, we can see more volume on to help relieve pressures other in other places. So they're looking at that. Um, we have the old A Street Bridge down at the town garage in pieces on the grass. And it's been there and we were told because it was an antique bridge, we can't do anything with it. We are, we've asked them if that is true and if there's anything we can do because it is simply sitting there and rotting. And uh, doing nobody any good. Uh, it can't be used for vehicular bridge ever again. It's too weak. So we are. We've been asked to give them photographs and a write-up as to where it came from and the history behind it. And they're going to pass it on and see if they can get some motion to help us get rid of it. Uh, line striping. Uh, hot topic around the state. Paint is available for many quantities. I think. What they were saying that you can get that, but they are not offering anything other than their requirements for like Randolph Road, Stagecoach Road. Uh, they aren't offering anything beyond that. We used to be able to contract with their their hired contractor to paint roads while they were in our area, but uh, that's not possible at this time. 
Um, so we're going to have to look for our own contractor to paint the lines. And we have had several paving projects over the last few years without uh, any paint being laid down. And, uh, there are areas that uh, that definitely need the definition of the WL lines for safety. Reasons. Are they are they not repainting the bypass? Restriping the bypass? Oh, they'll take care of their roads. Their, oh, okay. their roads are fine. It's it's oh. any roads that we would ask. We would contract with their with their they contract that service out. They, so okay. if we ask them to do any of our roads, you know, on the side of there, oh. they're not offering that up anymore. They they okay. have a lot to get caught up on because of the lack of paint last year. Um, okay. so anyway, we're kinda of on our own, but that's okay. We've been there before. And that's uh, in addition to that, the letters to the Park Street sidewalk will go out in the mail tomorrow. And we got the I-250 permit update earlier. And I just uh, I want to thank and bring to the attention the staff here in the office, uh, having assumed additional duties in the absence of an assistant for me. Uh, you can see our town clerk here doing an excellent job taking minutes. And Tina has uh, absorbed a lot of, uh, of work building the agendas and getting those out, and others in the building have done um, similar amounts of additional work as well. So as we are going to be reviewing the uh, resumes that have been submitted so far, uh, starting tomorrow, uh, looking to do perhaps schedule uh, interviews for early next week. So and my thanks to them for their extra work. Is that it? That's it. Any questions for Eric? Are the ladies going to be getting a spa day for the extra time? <laughs> I've got time to go to the spa. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Next, select board concerns. Judy. Um, just thank you for Kevin and the road crew for all the work you've been doing on the roads. I was just sharing. Just I was on Geltz Road and I'd never seen it in 20 some years we've lived here that bad. Just seeing all the gravel you had to put down and the worst part of the road is usually toward 100 and that was the better part of the road. Right. Yeah. Um, um, and of course for the for Tina and, and Sarah and whoever else is picking up the slack, thank you. Don. Uh, just, <clears throat> I would say ditto for what uh, Judy just said. Thank you, Kevin. And um, our roads up here, Mud City is named for what it is, or what it is for a reason. And the roads are actually very, very good right now. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of things. At the last meeting two weeks ago, we talked about that declaration of inclusion and we passed it. And I think that's great. Um, we did at the last meeting, um, at the very end of that discussion, uh, talk about revisiting that and revisiting some of that that additional sentence that the uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns had suggested. So I would just ask that that be put in into the, uh, to the for the agenda for the next meeting. The other thing, the only uh, other thing I have is I believe I'm correct in uh, remembering that at the last meeting, Bob, you may be in Europe in two weeks and I'm not going to May. Oh, you're not going till May. Okay. Well, yeah, that I it thought it was, but I don't have to go now. Okay. Uh, good. Well, in that case, um, I, I will just say it's going to sound like I don't like being with you guys, but tonight, tonight was a was a COVID issue. But in two weeks, my wife and I are going away for our first vacation in over two years. But I'll be able to zoom in for that meeting as well. Great. Thanks, Don. Thanks a lot for tuning in this way. No problem. Jess? Um, I also want to reiterate the, um, the thank you to the road crews and also to all the staff here in the office. Um, I see how much extra work you've been doing to make all the agendas and the packets and I really appreciate it. Um, and I also wanted to just give a really belated thank you to um, everyone who made the elections happen. Um, I, I know it's, it, it was a really um, arduous process and um, I just really appreciate um, all the um, the hard work and effort and attention to detail. Um, and even um, coming in here and getting our dog licenses, I saw a lot of people standing in line and it's just a lot of 
it's just a lot of administrative work. And I, I, I say that because, um, you know, being, being new on the board, um, you know, I have a lot of new ideas and um, um, I represent, I feel that some people in town who are um, concerned about change and looking um, to, um, looking to um, make changes. And I just want, I just want to say that um, my, um, my tone or demeanor, um, it has nothing, it's no reflection <coughs> on the job that the town employees are already doing. I think you all work so hard and are so dedicated. And I, that's usually how I start um, any conversation I have with someone who's concerned, a concerned resident. Um, and so I just want to say that publicly, I really appreciate all the work you all do and all the extra time you put in and how available you are when I have questions. Um, and, um, and that's it. Thanks, Jess. Brian. Yes, again. I want to thank the road crew. I hear still great, most of the people are still saying great things about the way things are going. <laughs> <laughs> and same with the staff. I, I see a lot of our stuff still getting done, which is really, really, I know it's a lot extra for you to do. And I want to thank Eric for checking on those lights. Maybe we'll get them in there. <laughs> I went through there the other night and I thought, well, what's this? It's a little tricky because the way you come down through there, it's almost like you don't see it till you get right there. And I think the light there would be nice. Uh, hope we it can works out. We can to put a crosswalk in there. The lights will be a, a yeah. given at that point in time. I yeah. don't think it's going to happen anytime real quick. But yep. as the sidewalk progresses along Stafford Avenue, you're going to see a portion of that being built, I would think, this year. Yep. Next year. Next year. I required a sidewalk from the dispensary as part of that project on the Hannaford side from their property line. So basically, Kind of uh, on both sides of the side entrance of Hannaford, there'll be a new section of sidewalk built in front of what I think is 76 Stafford Ave. So it just the only hole it leaves to get someone from, let's say, who's working MSI, to go get lunch at Hannaford's or dinner, whatever it is, is there's going to be the section of missing sidewalk across from where Perfect Temp and uh, Linden's, plot, Linden's uh, utility trailer place is. So if the select board thinks about upcoming new sidewalk pieces, that's going to be the one gap left in the sidewalk. MSI has built a sidewalk from their new building all the way to the truck route, and there'll be a sidewalk in front of 76 Stafford Ave, so both sides of flanking Hannaford side entrance. Then there'll be the one gap there that's probably no more than what, 120 feet, 150 feet? So that's a good section for a new section of sidewalk as you plan your future uh, infrastructure. <laughs> that sidewalk next to the dispensary has a build by Labor Day of 23. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. And I'd, I'd thank everybody, but everyone already thanked everybody. <laughs> uh, although I have to thank you, Kevin. I, I got invited to a little a little luncheon over at the highway department, and I appreciate that a lot. We had a, an appreciation lunch for uh, Town of Hyde Park, who helped us greatly. And um, it's we worked really in cooperation with each other as towns, and um, they helped us out this time, and certainly we would we would help them out uh, with our roads and, and everything. And it just made me realize how great our employees are, you know, all of our staff. It's nice that, um, it's really nice that I became the liaison for highway because I'm getting acquainted with all the guys and get a chance to sit down and, and listen to them. And it's really helpful to do that, to, to actually go there and listen to the things they say and the things they bring up. And, you know, and I know I appreciate the fact that our department heads are at, at the meetings, you know, it's great, Bill's here, Tina's here every time. Um, it's awesome, but it's really nice to also go and listen to the, all the staff people, and I think that's a big thing, and, and I appreciate the fact that, that we have a town that we do, and I uh, just wanted to thank thank you for that. And it was a, I was spoiled, I had macaroni and cheese and pulled pork sandwiches, and it was, <laughs> that was awesome. Comfort trying to make everybody jealous. I'm hungry right now thinking about it's it. Uh, and maple cream pie. That was really good. Oh, awesome. yeah. I've, I've never had so, that. Oh, it's Ooh. awesome. Well, it's who is it? Scott. Scott's wife is. Scott's wife, one of the employees, made this incredible wow. lunch. So I had seconds or thirds. <laughs> so, anyway, that's all I have. So, is there any other business tonight? I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm slowly working on the website. I've made a lot of changes, so if you see any 
links that don't work or something, let me know. Thank you. I've noticed it's like there's a lot more info there. and mm -hmm. It's much more streamlined. You used to be able to get my zoning applications on four different parts of the website. Now it's just one place, which makes much more sense. It's much easier to track things now. To yeah. Make sure the right applications are online and there's not four places where you can find them. So Sarah's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Sarah, you're, 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 doing home, yeah. Yeah, you're doing this a lot on your own time. Are you getting any compensation? Like days? Well, I'm a salary employee. Just salary. Uh, no, nor am I getting paid to be here right now. But, uh, maybe a salary. piece of maple cream pie. But I'm going on vacation for the next two weeks, and I'm not going to feel guilty. Okay, good. <laughs> good job. Good. All right, any other business? Just, I motion. I move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA paragraph 313. Section A, Section 3. I have a second. motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Right. There.